to the extent of some 240 million pounds. What fools they are. How ignorant for them to think that you believe these stupid lies. Open your eyes and look around you. See for yourself. See the splendid new Tamahabo. See the mighty water dam. See the fine roads which we have built under the leadership of the Convention People's Party and its government. See the schools, the colleges and the universities. See the clinics, hospitals, health centers and the facilities which we have created. See the factories which are already springing up. These are no debts. These are not debts. They are investment in our future as an independent nation. These are the physical guarantees of the bright new future which I have promised you and I have been working for. Together, we can put our Ghana firmly and squarely on its own feet. Together, we can create the things we need for ourselves instead of going cap in hand for charity handouts from foreign powers whose only wish is to exploit us and make us vassals to their interests. I know these are hard and trying days for you. I have never tried to conceal from you that real independence, that is to say economic independence, does not come without hard struggle and sacrifice. Unlike the cheats and deceivers, the liars and traitors who are now trying to lord it over you, I have never promised you any easy road. I have respected your good sense your capacity for work, your pride in yourselves, and your sense of national dignity. Why do you think these traitors, these agents and lackeys of colonialism and of international intrigue to destroy the independence of Ghana, chose this moment to perform their dastardly act? I will tell you, less than one month before they struck to destroy all our hard work we had inaugurated, the first electricity from the Volta Dam. Only three days before this treachery, we had signed a new agreement to irrigate the mighty Accra Plains. At last, we were on the threshold of a great new victory. We had in 1957 won our political independence after years of struggle. Now in 1966, we were at the threshold of winning our economic independence. The same people who tried to sabotage our winning of political independence nine years ago have now stopped to sabotage our economic independence and are systematically dismantling our socialist gains and achievement. Before the traitors and the rebellious National Liberation Council tried to usurp power during my absence from Ghana, Ghana was a heaven to which the oppressed from all parts of Africa could come to carry on their struggle. It was a heaven for freedom fighters, for independence and against colonialism. The name of Ghana was revered all over the African continent as a staunch friend of the oppressed. African brothers from South Africa, from Odisha, from Mozambique and Angola, from the so-called Portuguese Guinea and the Cape Verde Islands and other oppressed colonial areas were given hospitality amongst us. Do you think that this is something of which we needed to be ashamed? Not at all. On the contrary, it was something of which we should be justly proud. Haven't we proclaimed that the independence of Ghana is meaningless until it is linked up with the total liberation of Africa? Now, hundreds of these brave freedom fighters who came to our country trusting us to look after them and help them in their struggle against colonial oppression and believing as we do that Africa and the struggle for freedom is indivisible. These brave men and women have been sent back, back and baggage by this traitorous clique to the countries from which they have fled to seek refuge, inspiration and protection in Ghana. Countrymen, a new phase of the African Revolution has been reached. This revolution must overcome and triumph over imperialism, racialism, and neocolonialism. It must finally usher in the total emancipation and the political unification 
of our continent. Africa must be free. Africa must be united. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts. Thank you.